Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you some really basic editing you can do to your drawings after you scan them in order to make them look good because people always ask me what scanner I have because they say that their scanner makes their drawings look terrible and trust me, mine does too. I have an Epson NX100 which is like the cheapest, most basic printer you can get. So it is not fancy at all. It's all about tweaking it in Photoshop or whatever photo editing software. So I am going to be using Photoshop in this tutorial and if you do not have Photoshop, you can use whatever photo editing software you have, but you might not have all the same functions Photoshop has, but you can actually download the entire CS2 line from Adobe for free. They released it for free, so you can download it legally and free and I'll actually hunt that down and leave a link to it in the video description. Also, if you've ever purchased a drawing tablet, they usually come with a copy of Photoshop Elements for free, so also look for that if you have a tablet. So I'm going to be using Photoshop CS5 and this is actually CS5 extended. That's why I have this little color wheel down here. Um, I had I purchased that separately. So if you're wondering, that is a separate purchase that I loaded into Photoshop. And uh, yeah, so I guess we're going to get started on the tutorial. So this is a super, super basic tutorial. If you already know how to use Photoshop, this is not going to be useful for you. So you might as well not even watch. But if you're someone who's not very familiar with Photoshop, then this is the tutorial for you. So the tools I'm going to be covering are the crop tool, the levels tool, the clone stamp tool, adjusting hue, saturation, and value, and a little bit of the lasso tool. I'm also going to show you guys how to add a watermark and how to add curvature to that watermark. And I'm going to show you how to use the transform tool to deform your drawings in case your proportions are wrong. So if you already know how to use all that stuff, no point in really watching this. So anyways, let's get started. So when you're scanning your drawing, you might get a little dialog box that gives you the option to preview your scan, maybe adjust the brightness and contrast. Don't touch any of that. Just scan your drawing at the default settings. It's not going to look very good, but just leave it as it is. And then open it up in Photoshop. And here is my scan drawing of Loki that I've opened up in Photoshop. One thing you might want to do before you start working on your pictures is to duplicate this layer in case you make a mistake and need to go back to your original. I didn't do that for mine throughout this tutorial, but I thought I should mention it for you guys. So basically over in your layers panel, if you don't see the layers panel, just hit F7 and it'll pop up or you can go window layers and uh, basically it'll show up as a background layer and it is locked. You see this little lock icon means the layer is locked. So if you double click on the name of the layer, you can name it and which will unlock it. If you click this empty space beside the name, that's a whole different thing. That's for layer styles. There's a difference between clicking this blank space and clicking the actual name. So just double click the actual name. It'll bring up this dialog box and you can rename it whatever you want. And then you see the little lock symbol goes away and your layer is now unlocked. And then the quick way to duplicate it that I do anyway, is I hold down the alt key and I click and drag and then it just creates the second layer. And then you can do all your edits on this layer. And if you make a mistake, you can just go back to your original. So the crop tool is this little tool on the side here. And you basically just click and drag the section that you want to crop. And it does snap. You can see it's kind of snapping to the corner like this. That is a little bit annoying. You can actually turn snap off, but I usually just let go. And then you can adjust this way too. You just grab the little squares, drag them, and you can crop to a very specific spot. So I'm going to choose this spot here and then you just hit enter and it is cropped. So that is very basic and very easy. So the next tool I'm going to show you is the levels tool and this is honestly very, very useful. So you can hit control L and it'll bring up the window or you can go to image adjustments and then levels, which of course appeared on the wrong side, so it's totally being cut off right now. But because <laughs> uh, I'm I'm screen capping a small section of my screen, not my full desktop. So, anyways, this window pops up, and basically, this is adjusting the value of your drawing. Value is lights and darks. Like, just imagine everything in grayscale on a scale of white to black. So, my whites are not white. My blacks are not black. I need to fix this. So, there's different ways you can do this. First, I'll show you the color droppers, which I don't really recommend using. I do use them occasionally, but you, you want more precise control. But basically, these color droppers right here, you've got a black dropper, a 50% gray dropper, and the white dropper. So basically what this is doing, let's say I click the white dropper, you're then supposed to click an area of the drawing that is supposed to be white, but isn't quite white. So if I click over here, I'm saying this is supposed to be white, 
adjust the drawing accordingly and it just kind of brightened a little and if you click somewhere that's a little bit darker it'll brighten it even more but see that's screwing it up because I clicked an area that wasn't actually white so I just recommend not even using the color dropper at all but and you can also do it with the black color dropper click something that's supposed to be black like maybe your line art or something and just stay away from the 50% gray dropper because what are the odds you're clicking on something that's exactly 50% gray? Like just, just don't touch that one. But what I mostly use is the sliders right over here. So this little graph kind of shows you what there's most of. So because it's higher on the white side, it means my drawing has a lot of white. And if the little slider, see it, okay, <laughs> the graph kind of stops before the point of where the slider is. The slider is in this blank white area. It's not underneath the black graph. So if I drag this white slider until it's underneath the black spot, it'll whiten my drawing. And you don't even have to really care about the graph. If you want, just move the sliders and look at your drawing and just say like, okay, that looks pretty white. I'm going to leave it like that. If the graph confuses you, just don't even look at the graph. <laughs> but I'm also going to drag this black slider down. I just like to use the graph as sort of a ballpark estimate of where I want it to be. See here, this looks a little bit like there's too much black, so you can just kind of, you see it as I slide it, it adjusts it. And uh, I think this looks good here. You can also adjust this gray slider in the middle, but it auto adjusts when you slide the black and white, so you really don't need to tweak that unless you really wanted to. Like basically if I slide it towards the black slider, it's lightening everything except for the blacks and if I drag it towards the white slider it's darkening everything except for the whites so I'd recommend just leaving it at one which is the middle point point. and so that's me adjusting the levels that is most of the editing that is pretty close to how I want it but there might be a few other things you want to tweak so the next thing I'm going to show you is the clone stamp tool and this is something that I don't know if is exclusive to Photoshop or not but I use this when there's areas I want to get rid of like say, look at here, we've got this here, let me switch to my actual pointer. I've got this black splotch on here, that's not supposed to be there. And I could just grab a white paintbrush and color it out, but sometimes that's really hard to do. Like let's say there was a black spot somewhere else. Let's say there was a little black spot on his jacket like that. And uh, that's a gradient of color. I can't just grab green and color that out because you can totally tell where I just colored it out. So what's way easier is to use the clone stamp tool. So it's the tool located immediately under the brush tool. It is this one here. You click it and what you're going to have to do is select an area of the drawing that is what you want this area to be. So this is a gradient of green so I'm going to have to select an area that is a gradient of green. So you hold down alt and you see you get this little sort of target shaped thing and so I hold down alt and I click an area and now when I hover you can see wherever I hover it's gonna color green but you have to be careful because it's using your original drawing as a reference so if I click and drag can you see how it's not coloring green it's coloring what the picture is it's basically creating a second copy of your picture so what you're gonna have to keep do is you're gonna have to keep sampling so I'm gonna redo the sample alt click color and then if I wanted to adjust another area of green, I'm going to alt click again and then adjust it. So you're going to have to keep resampling. So I'm going to get rid of these ones. Instead of using the white paintbrush, just in case it's not pure white background, I'm just going to do alt color, alt click color, alt click color. And that is how I adjust that. So I think there's some, there's a little splotch right here, alt click color. And so the stamp tool is very, very handy. Just make sure to resample often and you won't run into any issues. So the next function I'm going to show you is the hue, saturation, and value. And usually I just use the hue function or saturation. If I'm going to be adjusting value, that is basically adjusting your levels. So I do that in the levels function. I don't really use that much in the hue, saturation, value window. So to access it, you can go image, adjustments, hue, saturation, value, or you can just do control U. And mine appeared on the wrong window, of course, because I have dual monitors. <laughs> so here it is here. And uh, basically, I would use this if the color is a little bit wrong. Usually the color is right, but let's say you didn't have a certain color you needed. Let's say uh, Loki's little jewel thingy in his staff is supposed to be more of a teal color, not blue. Maybe I didn't have a teal marker. So what I'm going to do is use hue, saturation, value. But <clears throat> to select just that specific area, I'm going to use the lasso tool, which is over here on the side. And basically, you just click and drag the area you want to select. This is a lot easier if you have a tablet. If you're using a mouse, you're going to have a hard time. And uh, 
I'm kind of selecting a bit of the line art, which is not the best idea. So try to do as precise of a selection as you can. And then I'm going to hit Control U. And if I adjust the hue, that means changing the color. So if I slide it one way, it turns a bit more green. You can see it, I can change it to pretty much any color I want. So I'm going to change it a bit, to be a bit more blue green. And then you can adjust saturation, which is how <laughs> I want to say saturated. It's how, you know, imagine a scale of gray to green. So there's really grayed out greens, which is low saturation, and then there's really bright greens, which is saturated greens. And then there's your lightness, which is basically your levels, but I really don't touch that. So once you have it as you want it, you hit enter or okay, and there you have it. You've changed the color of it. So that could be useful sometimes too. I really don't need that because it's the proper color anyways. Oh, and to get rid of these little marching ant lines, you just hit control D to deselect, and then those will go away. So I'm also going to show you how to add a watermark and I'm going to show you how to make it follow the contour of your drawing. So the text tool is this little T-shaped tool over here. You click and you get some options at the top for different fonts. You can go from regular to bold, etc. and the font size. And I'm just going to click onto the canvas and type in Bailey Creations because that's what I want my watermark to be. And then I'm clicking this little, just your basic arrow tool at the top to get me out of the, the text tool. And people say not to resize your text using the transform tool. They say to actually just decrease the font size, but I'm lazy, I just use control T. This is not like some fancy graphic design stuff. And basically you're gonna wanna hold down the shift key because if you don't, it's gonna scale not uniformly. So undo that. If I hold down shift, it'll constrain the proportions of the text. So let's say this is the size I want. I'm gonna hit enter. And then um, I actually want to rotate it, so I'm going to go back into Control T actually and just rotate it because I want it to nestle up against this section right here. Let's say you want the text to follow the curve of the drawing. Like his jacket is a little bit curved here. It's not an extreme curve, so it's probably not the best example, but I want it to follow the curve of the jacket. So make sure you have the text tool in selection and you'll know because you'll have an underline under your text and you'll see this little flashing cursor. So once you have that selected, you go up to the top here and there's this little T over top of a little curved line. Click that and then you go on to select your warp text style. So I select arc and it automatically curves my text, but you want to adjust this bend to get the proper amount of curvature. I think this is a good amount of curvature, so I'm going to click OK. And then to get out of the text tool, I'm going to click this little arrow at the top and then I can just basically drag that to where I want it to be. So right about there is good. I'm going to just control T to swivel it a little bit to make sure it matches up. And that looks pretty good to me. And then if you want to make it so that the text isn't as noticeable, you can adjust the opacity of the layer, which is up here. And basically you just pull down this slider until the text is as transparent as you want it to be. And yeah, that is basically it. That's how I create my watermarks on my drawings. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to use the transform tool to resize the proportions of your drawing. So basically what happened with my Elsa picture is I drew it and I inked it, but her head was too big. So I brought in the line art into Photoshop and tweaked it. And I was actually going to use that original file to do this portion of the tutorial, but I realized that that original file got deleted. So what I did was I took my final colored picture and I warped it. I made her head big and I made her body really skinny because that's kind of what the original one was like. So basically what you're going to need to do is grab this marquee tool here and it's the square one, not the lasso tool. And you're going to select an area. So I want her head to be smaller. So I'm going to select everything, including everything around her head. Basically don't do precise selection. Select using this rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to select her head. And then you're going to hit control T to bring up the transform tool. And remember how I said you hold down shift to do proportional scaling. Well, this time we're going to hold down, hold down control, hold down control and then click the corners and it'll give you the option to skew the picture. And so I can make her head a little bit more narrow. Don't touch these bottom squares though down here because that will mess up how your drawing is aligned. Like the lines on her neck won't match up anymore if you start moving those around. So let's say that's how I like her head. I hit enter but you're, it might shift your picture over by a pixel or two. If you just hit the arrow keys while the, the marching ants are still there, you can move it over a pixel or two to make it so it's lined up. I think mine was lined up fine. Yes, it was fine. So I'm just gonna 
press control D to exit the selection. Now I want her body to be a little bit wider. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the rectangular marquee tool, but I'm gonna select just her body. And then control T, and then holding down the control button, grabbing the bottom corners, I'm gonna pull them out. And you can see her neck is no longer aligned because I'm skewing it quite a bit. So I'm gonna to have to watch out for that. So that looks about right. I've pulled out the corners, her body is wider. I like that, I'm gonna hit enter. And then while the marching ants are still there, I'm gonna arrow over one because it hurts. She's a little bit not aligned at the neck. So that looks good. Hit control D to get rid of the marching ants. And I've skewed the picture. So that's a very useful tool to have if your proportions are wrong. I really don't use this a lot. Actually, the first time I ever used it was on the Elsa picture because I don't really like modifying my original sketches that much. But yeah, that is a very useful tool. So just as a recap, I showed you how to use the crop tool, adjust levels, use the clone stamp tool, adjust hue, saturation, and value using the lasso tool, how to add a watermark and warp the watermark to follow the shape of your drawing, and how to use the transform tool to skew your drawings. So hopefully that's all you really need to edit your artwork. It's just very basic. You don't need to do anything fancy. And the more you tweak with your artwork, the more artificial it becomes anyways. I, I don't like to tweak it too much. My main goal is to just make it look like how it looks in real life. I want the scan to look like the copy I have in front of me. So that's mostly what I try to do. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys and thanks for watching.